G'day, I'm Karen. Welcome to Life in the Bush. In this video, I've brought you to Port Phillip Bay, southeast of Melbourne, Victoria, and I'm on the traditional lands of the Boon Wurrung people. This beautiful tree next to me is Banksia integrifolia, and in this video, you'll learn why this Banksia species is a little bit different to most Banksias. Banksia integrifolia grows in coastal sands and it's common along the coast in Victoria through New South Wales and the southeast corner of Queensland. Locally here it's known as Coast Banksia but it has many names across its range in Australia such as Honeysuckle or White Honeysuckle or White Banksia. So the botanical name Banksia integrifolia, Banksia the genus comes from Sir Joseph Banks and integrifolia, if we break that down into inter, that means entire, and folium means leaf. So the leaf has what you call an entire margin. The margin of the leaf is the edge of the leaf. However, they don't start out that way. The juvenile leaves, the young leaves on the plant, have dentate margins, which means they're toothed. So think teeth, dentist, dentate. Dentate margins mean they are toothed. Another distinguishing feature of Banksia integrifolia is that the leaves grow in the pattern of a whirl. So like a whirlpool, but not with an I, spelt with an O instead. And the tops of the leaves are this dark green color, but if you turn them over to look at the underside, they're very light. And if you feel it, it's almost like velvet. Now Banksia flowers are really cool. This here, is not an individual flower that's a spike with hundreds of flowers growing together in pairs and each flower is what you call sessile which means it doesn't have a stalk doesn't have a flower stalk it grows immediately out of the flower spike the great thing for birds and other bush animals is that this banksia species grows flowers most of the year so that's excellent for nectar feeding birds, nectar feeding insects and birds that love to feed on insects of course. The bark is this rough brown scaly colour. Those are wattle birds you can hear in the background and also the toot of a train. I'm near the Frankston train line and that's a train coming from Frankston heading to Melbourne. So the way that this Banksia integrifolia differs to many Banksias is that apparently about eight to 10 months after flowering, the fruit follicles actually open and drop their seed naturally, which is quite uncommon in Banksias because most Banksias require heat to open the follicles and that would come naturally from fire. So the great news is these Banksias don't require a fire to naturally regenerate in the bush. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you've learned something interesting about Banksia integrifolia. Comment below if there's something that you particularly liked about this video or you have any other feedback. And if you're not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing because it does help me out greatly. And I love to make these videos for you. I hope to see you soon on my next video from Life in the Bush.